Thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, we're excited because we'll be presenting um, three artist talks today. And um, uh, first, but not least, I don't know <laughs> We have, um, we'll, take we'll take it. Catherine Bagwell will be um, talking about her exhibition, Messengers, um, right here in this, in this section of the gallery. And um, without further ado, Catherine. really a marvelous, marvelous opportunity for me to put a show out that is really um, sort of different from what I'm known for. Uh, as far as I'm really a fiction artist, um, I do a lot of cubism works uh, on, on canvas with oil. Uh, but I got this idea, actually it was after my mother passed and I was going through her things and you may have read this already. But I got this idea about the totems from a photograph that she had been to camp in Wonka in uh, Michigan when she was 15 years old. And uh, it was this beautiful photograph of a black and white photo of a, of a totem pole, but not the kind of totem poles that you sometimes see that are like gargoyle. And you see all different kinds that have sort of super, super decorated. This one was very sleek and very elegant. And it really kind of put in my mind that I wanted to do something with wood. Uh, my family uh, is kind of a lumber family. My father, my grandfather was a pine tree farmer in Arkansas. And, uh, Anyway, so I got this idea, and Joshua Poole is not here today, but he uh, makes my canvases for me, and he does just this, all this beautiful work with the wood on the back of the canvas that you never see. It makes it easy to carry and just lovely, and he's just a good fella. So he was immediately came to mind as a partner to, to do these works. Um, the to I call them totems. Um, that's kind of a problematic uh, word for some people. But if you look it up, it's a global phenomenon. It goes way, way back anthropologically. Um, I drew the seven figures uh, on a yellow pad in my kitchen one morning after thinking about them for several weeks. And uh, they just kind of came out one after the other, which is common for my practice. Uh, but it was, they were four inches in scale. And it was really quite a learning journey to uh, get them from the four inch yellow pad to what you see today. Um, we ended up making um, digital files of the pencil drawings at Cooper Lux. Katie Lewis, sweetheart, helped me so much. Well, I don't think it's Lewis, Katie. Uh, making the digital files, and even that in itself was uh, quite an undertaking because, you know, he's just tick, 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 making those files. You know, they would, someone make it and look at it and show it to me, and I'm like, oh, that just looks absolutely nothing like the figure. So I had to really kind of be there while they made these files, and so. We went from digital files to using a CNC router, which is where the computer speaks to the saw, and they cut out a template out of just pressed plywood, and then Joshua laid that template on the African mahogany that we that I selected, and that's where he came, you know, figure by figure. We started on these in the end of January of last year, and it took us, you know, most of the uh, year to complete them. Uh, the uh, while he was figuring out how to uh, cut them out, I gave myself lessons in painting on wood in, with oil paint, which was in itself kind of a, an adventure. I have uh, flat boards with all of these faces in their first rendering. Um, but uh, I think that for me, the presence of the totems is really about, you know, you know all of us, whether we know it or not, have some um, DNA memory things that come out of us, you know, or something that that you express that sometimes that you can't understand. And I think we're just really related to, um, you know, the people that were drawing on the caves a long, long time ago. Um, but what I love about them is that the anthropomorphic lines that are the outlines are juxtaposed with the geometry, which I used, to, I had some templates made to create most of it. but because the symbol, geometric symbols are from the universe, which is perfect. And then the outlines, of course, are not perfect at all. But I like that juxtaposition. Uh, anyway, anyone have any questions? Too early? 
Okay. So the paintings that you see, they go with the totems. Um, most of them are rooted in a series that I call Anthropa. Um, we have sold a lot of the Anthropa series, but this is uh, one P, uh, triptych that still exists. Um, and those are really kind of a game that I play on the canvas when I get a really soft piece of charcoal. And the outlines of the figures that you see, you, know, you start the drawing, and of course the occupying of the canvas is you know, present in your mind. But the trick is, or the rule is, is that as you're making the figure that you can't pick up your charcoal. So you have to go all the way around and you close the loop at the end. And this is on raw canvas before the painting. Um, and of course these are very much influenced by cave paintings. We were in Turkey in October. And you know, it was new to me that there were so many fantastically decorated and painted cave caves, not just in Turkey, but all over Europe. And um, so I'm determined to see more of those. It, it was a, a really fantastic experience. Um, these two pieces are older. Um, I matched the backgrounds to a rock that I found in Arkansas. Uh, which I enjoy matching colors with, you know, you have to, there's a lot of mixing involved. But this one, Lion Head, it was uh, inspired by, is it Leuchtin? How would you say that? But he's the ancient Germanic lion figure that was discovered, and he's like thousands and thousands and thousands of years old. But um, I spent a lot of time Googling historic and archeological figures sometimes before I start to work. Um, this painting in here is one of the most recent that I've done, and it uh, is called God Save the Queen. I'm kind of fascinated by the fact that in insects and human beings and animals, that there's a tendency to designate an authority figure. Humans do the same thing. So that's why I did this piece that is about the queen, which is the gal in the center with all her entourage. And somewhere in here, there's also a piece that has a queen ant. No, I'm going to revisit that thing over there. Um, the piece is back here. This piece back here is, uh, was inspired by this color scheme because it uh, has been very popular. And this piece back here is a little different, and it's called uh, The Domestication of the Humans. And if you take a look at it, you can see that um, the animals are kind of dominating. And to me, the right panel, the bird guy on the left is definitely the boss. And the human figure, the far right, you know, he's kind of a, well, he's standing in the corner waiting for somebody to give him a crack. I like your dog. Anyway, I do tend to make fun of human beings, but uh, I actually love them, so don't take me wrong. <laughs> I'm going to do a whole series of all the glorification of human beings at some point, but it's not probably going to be right away. Um, this piece here I did during COVID. Um, and it does deal with death and ceremony. Um, this was a canvas that I had uh, abandoned, and uh, I covered the canvas with, which already had the colors on it, with thick oil paint, and then I drew the drawing of the four figures, you know, just with charcoal, and then I removed all the paint that was within the lines, and that's kind of how that came out looking. I am uh, very prolific. My studio is in my house in Preston Hollow. I'm very fortunate. I've had a lot of support of my husband, Robert. I'd never be um, where I am now without him because I probably would have just you know, kept stacking it up in there. But we've been very fortunate and have really good run. My first solo show was in 2020, right before COVID. So I'm very grateful to Jordan who uh, brought my yellow pad right down here and just showed you those figures. And uh, yeah, and so here we are. You said that was saying talk about your hand drawing the faces. They look like they have maybe um, taking a stab in the dark, but Italian drama in them? Am I totally oh, like Comedia. Very yeah. interesting comedy. Yeah. Especially that one and the first one. I was curious if, and, I, and you brought up Europe and Germany. I was in Turkey. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, the, you know, I well, I have spent so much time looking at African and Greek art, you know, and I'm, all my education is in music, um, but I've spent a lot of time. That's the beautiful thing about Google and the digital age; it's all just right there at your fingertips. So I can't say that there was one specific thing that influenced the faces. I um, 
just kind of went along and uh, created them. Um, but I would say that it's just a multicultural influence for me, just based on how I work. Um, but um, yeah, I'd say some kabuki. Some kabuki, for sure. That's an interesting comment as well. But they, um, I did make a uh, a real decision, and I say to people, if you really want to experience the totems, that you really need to get close enough to them. It's okay with me if you want to run your hand down because the wood feels so beautiful. I wanted that to be part of the experience, but I did give them all pupils. So when you get up to them, they will make eye contact with you. And that was, a, I couldn't decide. I put them in, I took them out, I put them in, and then I decided based on people's responses to leave them in um, because, you know, it takes you right into their soul. They have something to say to you and it's very positive. <laughs> Does each one signify something different? I can't say that they do. We named them for the Greek alphabet. Uh, I think it's how they're listed on, on the sheet, but that was just to make them easier to designate. You know, they really came out one after the other, and sometimes people see gender in them. It's not, um, it's not something that's intentional, uh, but. Uh, it's interesting to say the background's originally in music, because they, the bodies almost look like musical instruments. I know, you're not the first person to say that. Yeah. Well, my original concept was um, to have them be even more, I kept thinking of uh, surfboards when I was working on, I mean, in my mind that they would be, you know, very narrow at the sides. And when we, this is the first one that we built, and when we were really starting to sand it, I realized that I really like the thickness here because I like the shadows and I like kind of what that does to your eyes. So I didn't bring them down as thin on the sides as I originally had thought because I just, that, but other than that, they are very, very true to the original drawings. But you the said, musical instrument thing, I, you know, that's just who I am, I guess. And the woods act in the audience? Is. And is there significance behind the wood or is it just No, we went to the wood store. Sure, sure, yeah. <laughs> yes, they have the one that you like the most. Exactly, well, it was somewhat based on price, but color, I wanted a certain color very much. And I think that um, I just love that uh, they have been sprayed and sealed, but very lightly because I didn't want it to get too dark. But I love that um, the color of the mahogany. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about like the idea, or not the idea, but just a little bit about the process of getting? Because you're working very flat, right? Um, and then the totems are obviously very three-dimensional. Um, and you mentioned a little bit about the process. Of I started thinking about the three-dimensional uh, rendering of these shapes, I really couldn't get it out of my head. Um, you know, I, uh, and it wasn't, um, I now have some new ideas for some things that are probably even more, that will not be shaped like a surfboard, as far as the flatness of them. But uh, I think that uh, I really have loved the, the actualization of the three dimensions. It's very satisfying to me. I love the, because you can see the curves in one dimension, you know, on, on a canvas, you know, and your eye follows it, but it's quite another thing to be able to just really see the real thing. And to me, it's very celestial. But I never had any idea how complicated it would be to get from four inches on paper to four feet as we see them here. And then the heads, well, that was just a whole other thing. I threw out a lot of heads, I did. Poor Joshua. <laughs> it's so much more difficult to make an edit when someone's in their, you know, in their, where he works in his house and is sweating away and I'm thinking, oh my God, that is not gonna work. But I'm just, with, the, with my own self, I'm just go, God, Catherine, that's awful, get rid of that. But, that's not the way I could make the edits. It's interesting working with a team. It's really my first time working with a team on art. Um, I guess to kind of follow a little bit, there seems to be like this use of like symbols or like shapes as symbols. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of a common, even in like not just in the sculpture, but kind of in your painting as well. Oh, yes. Um, can you talk a little bit about kind of the formation of that language and maybe the kind of the code behind it if there is one? Well, I'm not really sure that 
back and say how it happened in my work, uh, other than that it's just my own specific, I would say, it's interesting that you say some of the words that you're using, because I would say it's a shaped vocabulary for me, very much. Um, and then even some of my um, more figurative work, you know, there's always a circle or an oval or a, um, I like the perfection of those shapes and I like how when you've got the human being doing their thing and then you put the perfect shape in there like a circle or a flat circle, uh, it does something. You know, there's a certain energy and tension that happens, I think, in the juxtaposition. And you will find very little of my work that doesn't have a circle or an oval in it. I actually had Cooper Lux make um, shape, these shapes to where, because I already, you know, could see myself uh, trying to get these shapes that I was having in my brain on the wood. And so they actually cut them out for me out of this flat, kind of flexible plastic. And so this is an example of a long one here that I kind of adapted. And um, the circles, I had a whole series of circles that were made that I could lay on the wood. You know, I was pretty much had it at a 45 degree angle in my studio and I was straddling it. Um, it was very intense to do the painting on the wood because it's very unforgiving. So, you know, I mean, I painted a lot. I have a lot of practice, but it was still, you know, certain paint behaves differently depending on what color that you're using, I find, or what you mix in there. And so sometimes if you take the oil paint and you add the oil and you let the paint sit for a little while with the mixture, I find that it's so much more um, cooperative because when you're doing a straight line like this, you know, and I'm hell on my brushes and all new brushes just about every time because even just one little bristle that would go over here would throw all of this off. So it was very exacting. It was good if there was no one in the house at all. <laughs> and I tend, when I listen to music when I work, I tend to listen to the same thing over and over, which is like really weird. It drives people, it drives my daughters insane. Mom, how many times have you played that? But if I listen to music that I'm unfamiliar with while I'm working, my brain just completely bifurcates and goes up there. So that, that's really a specific thing about my work that is true. But the painting of the totems was, whoa, it was really something. And then, like when I first started, I had all kinds of ideas for things of different combinations, but by number six or number seven, I was really kind of racking my brain to come up with something that was fitting and also not duplicating. So that was interesting. They almost feel like Um, fascinated by leaving some of them like this guy just didn't want to have anything else other than his one and the backs are done also and some of them the backs started as the front and then I you know could you know flipped them because depending on the harmony of it was difficult to photograph them it was more difficult than you would expect it, could, it took me a long time to get a photo of them that I really liked um, really couldn't get it until I got them all down here so but anyway, the painting of the totems, that was, that was a thing. It was real, everyone I got, I would just say, good job, Catherine, <laughs> when I would get one finished. And some of them just, you know, the paint just lined up just so perfectly, and then, then you've always got one that just kicks back. That's just part of it. I find that to be true all the time. Anyway, any other questions? So how did you transition from the music to visual art? Um, I have a very left brain family. I could always draw all my life. It runs in our family. And, um, but I had a sister who left this earth voluntarily in, gosh, was that 2010? And I worked as a musician always. You know, I sang up these several instruments and sung professionally for many years. But I just really wanted to do something different for a while. And that's when I took, I took one class at um, Creative Arts Center in Dallas. That's what it was. It was so great. There were such great teachers out there. But I took one figure drawing class here, and it just kind of started me out. And I think that uh, I was really lucky because a lot of people don't have the time to really devote to developing a new skill, and, and I really did, and I was fortunate in that regard. But the uh, to me, uh, all the same, um, you know, when I talk about my paintings or particularly more figurative works, you know, rhythm and balance and tone and, you know, negative space, duration, rest, it's all in there. It's really kind of cool. I love the overlap.
Yes, Mitch. Um, I'm just wondering, do you use gesso on the wood before you use the oil paint? Oh, you don't go right, right on, on it. That's amazing. Put it right in there. And it did do, the oil did bleed some. And we had already planted, I think, this is clear. Yeah, we tried clear. first the, the varnish over Oh, the well, no, no, no. We did, no. We, I painted right there on the naked wood. Sanded, though. Wow. It's very, very interesting. Some of the boards were like, so much more absorbent and so and some of them didn't want the paint some of them love the paint it's so interesting uh, but we i think it's clear coat that's on there that is what's on there it's wet. and we clear coated the figures after you know they were totally dry I thought, I thought maybe before well i know you know and I, I really still don't know what exactly again talk about a work in progress or a learning gosh so many learning um curves in creating I hope it to do something next that, that involves um, iron and wood. I want to do a combination, you know, kind of an earthly reflection. But uh, we'll see what happens. But the, when they came back to me, when I sent them out and they were painted and they were not yet sprayed, uh, when they came back, and it, it took me, it was like a kind of did double paint because it did change their quality and their character to be sprayed. Uh, it was like they'd gotten all dressed up or something. It was so interesting. But um, Joshua just did beautiful work throughout, and he was so patient with me um, because I am uh, I like to work fast, and I can look at something very quick and, and know what I don't like. And um, he was uh, the epitome of patience. So you know the heads on these turn. Um, which I think is, uh, we, uh, it makes them so much easier to move, of course, to be able to remove the heads. And, uh, but we like to turn the heads. <laughs> and um, if, if you get up and walk around before you leave, you can see, it's, I think some of the, the backs, some of them are really some of the best work. Uh, so it's been, um, it's an interesting thing, the painting of them. And it's amazing how many different things you can come up with. With, with, if you, with a little overlapping of the templates. And, and I'm obsessed with the number three, which you could tell uh, for musical reasons. Anyone else? I asked you a few weeks ago, like an obscure question. Um, are they from the past, the present, or the future? Have you thought about that since? Well, past, present, future, you know, is really, really very brief as far as humanity goes. <laughs> I think they're from the past. I mean, I think that they're, uh, to me, uh, you know, their message is you know, to consider the past. Consider the past and, you know, take good care of this planet. They're not, uh, Judgmental to me, they're not saying anything other than you know, kind of an uh, all is well. That's that's what they say to me. They they say different things to people, of course. But I think that to me, one of the most successful things about the set is the variety of the shades. And uh, I have learned in my work, but I don't really. I try not to change things when they come out in a certain form. I try to just stay out of the way. And so I'm happy with, I love their shapes, wherever they came from. <laughs> I miss them. <laughs> Anyone else? Oh, that's all right. I was too. Uh, um, so what are they going to do? I was wondering a few things. Uh, uh, is there a specific uh, reason you have seven of these total? Um, Did you, you know, like three? that's just how many came out. That's just a, because literally um, these are drawn right after the other. I probably drew them all in about ten minutes after. But there's a lot of prep that goes into that. You know, sometimes I say that and you can tell people just go, what the 
gosh, you know, you need, you need a lot of research and thinking and, uh, you know, contemplating and sitting with it that leads up to that moment when you realize, ah, it's time to draw these. But then they come right out after the other. And actually, it was suggested to me that, that there should, maybe should be eight. And the eighth one was just not to be had because you don't want to get in there and start working at it, you know, because you'll get up something that's really, really dreadful that doesn't go with everything else. And thank God there wasn't an eighth one because I'm not sure I could have decorated it. <laughs> because by the end, I was really, um, you know, it was challenging to come up with something yet again different and fresh for the four the symbols. Everybody that I know comes in and starts picking their favorite. <laughs> so funny. I had them in the house one time. They weren't even sealed or anything. But there were some, some, they were the greatest guys. I don't even know what they were there for. They would do something around the house, fix something. And I, I'd been across to the other end and I was crossing through. And they were all there picking their favorites. It's the cutest <laughs> moment. I'll never forget it because they were, they were so uh, ready to talk about the art. And I just think that it's so important that everybody from all walks of life have the opportunity to interact with art because these guys had the greatest comments and I really invited them to come down to the show and gave them all the information. I don't think any of them did. I, went back to, I tried to tell them. I said, oh, it's a really easy place to come to. You know, because a lot of people wouldn't, you know, people that aren't used to stepping into an art gallery wouldn't do it to save their soul. They're intimidated or they're whatever. And, uh, but anyway, that was one of my favorite moments with the totems was with these fellows. Else. Did you hey, choose oil paint because that's the paint you're used to working with? 100%. Okay. I've, acrylics and I have not made friends. I've tried. Um, and then I've worked also with gouache, which I really, really like, but I wouldn't put it on wood. Yeah. Did you just made the paintings before the sculptures, or did you? Which did the you decorations? I know yeah. uh, the, the, the wall paint. The oh, uh, several of these were done before these, and then I did two or three, like this one back here is new, and this one, um, so kind of before and after. I think, I'm sorry. I think we hung these at a, one other, I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure they were wet. I'm always like, a crazy person. I do one more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, thank sorry. you, Catherine. This You're was so welcome. Really thank you all so much. Great questions.